Hello, race fans. Welcome to another episode of Short Track Guys Podcast, brought to you by ShortTrackExclusives.com. I'm your host, Thomas Faddis, along two good friends of mine, Jim Pokrant, the driver of the 07 CantQuitFishing.com sportsman here locally at Five Flags Speedway in Pensacola, and Ted Baber, of Ted Baber Video Productions, also locally here in Pensacola, Florida. What's up, guys? Good evening. We've got some catching up to do. I know we uh, we got together last Wednesday, and um, Jim, you're sitting there with the points lead, but you've got an off week to kind of relax and put your car aside. And uh, you're getting ready for a open wheel mayhem modified situation going on with the wing sprint cars and the modifieds this Friday night. Um, and you're you're helping someone else out, so you're actually going to be in in the the scene to the racetrack. Yeah, I help a guy named Ben Cranford. He runs a 343 Pure Stock. He's a good friend of mine. He he helps me on our car, and he built the chassis that we put together for Brock Gents. So, uh, you know, he he asked for our help, and we're going to go out and give him a hand. And at least this Friday night, I can give him our undivided attention. We don't have to worry about our cars. We can get in there and help him more and try to get him faster. I mean, better his last finish. His last finish was eighth on the lead lap. We just wanted get him in the top five and, and bring it on the trailer in one piece. Yeah, well, tell us a little bit more about him and uh, the relationship that you have and had developed for this series. Well, he's a he's a uh, fishing boat captain out of Orange Beach, and he has his own uh, marine business, a really good guy. And Tim Bryant from Five Flags told him that uh, he asked, who, who can I trust? Because he built a car that was stock, stock, like a bomber car. And he didn't know any better. And the Derby got his butt handed to him. And he asked Tim, he said, I've asked a bunch of people, but I don't know who to trust. And Tim said, talk to Jim. He'll help you. And he contacted me. And I went to his house and looked at the car and realized it was like bone stock. You know, the pure stock's now a race car. So we started helping him a little here and there. And then he kind of came out to our shop. And his car's in our shop right now. We're uh, I changed some stuff in the front end. And uh, we're going to try to get it to where it'll handle better get some better shocks, just little things, you know, that don't take much. I got him to finally loosen up the suspension, um, change some bushings, just little things that don't take much. Once you get that thing to handle, you know, he can drive pretty good. So we're going to give him a hand, see what happens. Yeah. They're going to run 25 laps. Um, and then the modifieds are running 50 and, uh, the wing sprinting cars, which is kind of a, Ted, would you say a uh, little up in the air maybe as far as the car count? But they, they will run 40 laps in uh, eight-lap heat races. But what what do you think we can expect there? Well, it's a little bit of a mystery. Yeah. From what I've been uh, I've told, they're not 100% sure on the car count, but I'm really hoping it's going to be good. And I'm hearing threats from one particular individual that the 12-second barrier might be broken. Mm, Don't that would be awesome. <laughs> Well, hold on to that, because that, uh, I'm telling you what, I've been there, I've seen that up close and personal, uh, not in a seat, but uh, those guys start laying down low 13s and break that, you know, into the 12-second barrier. I'm telling you, that is quick. The place is going to explode if that happens. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you you got to consider, you got to hold that car wide open for two laps. That means you, yeah. you cannot pull your foot up. You got to yeah. hold it down and pray that the wing and all the aerodynamics works perfectly, yeah. and you your mechanical grip is there. Right. And I'm gonna tell you that's something insane to watch that car going to corner and you hear the the motor work and just because the back tires are digging so hard. I mean, those guys got a big set of hairy cojones because. Dude, to get in one of those things and do that, I don't think I could hold it wide open. I just don't think I got it. Yeah, and I'm I'm just going to take a wild guess as to maybe uh, a, a hot shoot coming down from South Florida around the Tampa area, Troy DeCare. Oh yeah, would he uh, would he happen to be one of the ones that uh, might threaten that? He might. I mean, like I said, I, I don't I don't know much about that guy, but I mean he he talks a big game. He claims that it might fall, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah, it'd be the, interesting. The weather, weather's going to play a little part in that too. Is the temperature right? Yeah, if it's real hot and sticky, the air's real thick. It, they 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 don't cut through there. But what's really cool is watching them things throw a vapor trail going down the front straightaway on a on a cool, uh, like a March night yeah. when they ran used to run them here all the time. Or October, either one. I've seen it happen on both. both oh yeah, <laughs> man, those guys are just big, big, big uh, biggins. Yeah. That's all I can say. That's well, I hope I hope they have a big car count. I know the modifieds are going to have a, uh, you know, they're they're modified to Mayhem's one of their local stops here on that series. Um, and you know, we're going to expect Casey Smith to come back. And you know, I think he did take the win the first time. He did, and I did call that. I have to put that out there. Yeah, you did. I did call it you and did. Uh, look for him to come back and uh, and. And do it again with, uh, you know, 
another one of our heroes, uh, Augie Grill. Yeah. Um, a lot of those guys, Bill Burba, I think, won in Nashville just earlier. Yeah, he um, did. He Bill Burba won. He finished in the top three or four in Pensacola. Yeah. So he's the modified uh, Mayhem points leader. Yeah. So. Well, if the car count is anything that, like we have seen and hopefully expect, uh, folks, get your tickets and get out there to Five Flags Speedway and watch that open wheel night. Uh, you won't be disappointed. I promise. I and that, I'm going to tell you something else too. That pure stock race is going to be a good one because the last one was a barn burner. And I, I'm going to tell you, that's another class that's fun to watch. Right. Them guys get to beating and banging and pushing and shoving. And uh, it's a good show. I had the rare opportunity to put a uh, in car in Dave Steele's car, rest your soul. And the sound coming out of the car was just brutal. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Especially Dave Steele, because he was one of the baddest sprint car drivers in Florida. That dude right. was a legend. Yes. He was, yeah. He was so much fun to have. I, I, I just love that opportunity. It's one of the few things you get to do that you really enjoy. Yeah. I, I put cameras. If Remember we put that one in Donnie Wilson's car for the Snowball Derby that year, and I had to turn it on for him. He was nice enough not to fire the car because I was leaning right over the exhaust pipe. It was right there in my, <laughs> my, my guts. And he looked at me and I go like that. And I turned the camera on and then he, he, he was nice enough to wait till I stepped back and then he fired the car. Yeah, I've, I made that mistake with Logan Boyette one night. I had my foot right up against the exhaust pipe when he fired it off. I thought I was going to lose a leg. Yeah. Well, those things are, <laughs> those things make a ton of exhaust noise. But I mean, you know, he didn't blow my eardrums by doing that. I thought it was kind of nice of him. <laughs> Not as good people, though. Very good. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, you know, resting souls, I uh, want to give a shout out. We would need to talk about this and get it over. Um, everybody is familiar with uh, a, a famous engine builder here in the southeast on a dirt track and asphalt, and his name is Buddy Miller. Buddy. He's my engine yeah. builder uh, the whole entire time in my 10 years uh, out at Five Flags Speedway and learned last week that he had passed away. And uh, our thoughts and prayers. And condolences go out to the Miller family. Yeah, his Absolutely. his his wife and and his grandsons and his son. It, it's terrible. He he was good people. He he did some engine work for me a bunch, and he was always just he he would come to the snowball derby and he'd park his golf cart and he'd have everybody in that area laughing so hard you couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. He'd start telling stories about when he was because he was a he was a highway patrol officer, and he was a local Milton cop too before mm -hmm. he he retired from both. And uh, just a great all-around guy. Just somebody that I worked with him at Southern as a tech man for a little while. Just a great, great guy. He, just somebody you're going to miss. Yeah, we spent uh, many hours in his shop out in Milton. And, uh, you know, he would do the same thing. He would tell jokes and everything. But he'd get his work done and see him at the racetrack. And he'd always, you know, joking around and having a good time and riding around his golf cart and everything. But not only just an engine builder, but he was a, a heck of a tech man, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He did a good job at Southern. He kept things going over there. I, as a matter of fact, I was he was supposed to retire, and I was going to supposed to take over for him, but extenuating circumstances kind of got in the way, and I didn't get a chance to do that for him. But uh, he's a great guy. He will be missed very sorely. It just it's it's a tough loss, and it was a surprise to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to miss him, and um, you know, like again, you know, our thoughts and prayers are out with the Miller family, and. If that helps, I, I hope it does, and uh, we're all going to be in that same boat, missing him and and wanting to see him at the racetrack again. And uh, it just a, was a great experience in my time getting to know him uh, mm -hmm. and have him do the work for me. Uh, you know, I don't know what else to say, but you know, he's going to be missed for sure. Yeah, um, great people. Yeah, and there's another one, uh, Jack Ingram, uh, NASCAR driver, uh, recently passed away as well. Yeah, he was a a, a five-time sportsman champion, which is predecessor predecessor to the Bush Grand National Series. They call him the Iron Man because he run two hundred and seventy five races in the Xfinity Series, and they don't know how many wins he assessed over his career because he won so many. They just you know they didn't count it, but they call him the Iron Man. And I I remember him, and he was he run snowball derby a lot. He would come down here. Uh, just a just a all around NASCAR bad bad you know what in the day. Yeah. <laughs> he just he was one of those guys that just you didn't mess with him on a racetrack, and uh, that was I've watched some of his old races and it's he's an impressive driver for for the, his time. Well, we'd like to you know give a shout out and a mention to that. Uh, I think it's important that everybody know who these figures and icons are, and uh, that you know both in in different aspects of of racing in and out uh, of the race shop, uh, they're going to be missed. And, um, 
you know, they, they'd want everybody to continue doing what they're doing uh, because that's yep. the way they did it. They loved it, and um, that's why they helped everybody. Um, so it, it's they're going to be missed. And they're part of the history. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, especially Jack Ingram. Dude, I'd, I'd, I've heard stories. A friend of my dad's used to uh, work. He, they used to him and his brother used to work uh, shutdowns like uh, plant shutdowns till they had enough money to go racing and then they would go to Jack's shop and get their car because they kept their car at Jack Ingram's shop and they helped Jack Ingram build motors. I mean Barry Sanford was a friend of my daddy's and he he said we'd go in his shop and we'd build cylinder head. He'd, he'd have me on the machine shop side building cylinder heads for his motors and for us and him and his brother Mr. Sanford his brother would race until they run out of money and then they go back to work so you know it's it's they knew jack personally and really well and said he was just a, he was a great guy and uh you know was just let him use their shop you know and you, you don't have that these days anymore that's the definition of a, a shoestring budget right there oh yeah yeah i mean but him and his brother was the driver mr sanford's brother was the driver and uh They'd get their bush car out, or back then the late model sportsman, and get it together, and they'd go race. And then when they, like I said, they run out of money, they'd be like, "All right, time to go back to work." Well, that's the way you do it. You, sometimes you just have to do it that way. You know, get yeah. it. But racing ain't like that anymore. I mean, yeah. it it used to be you could you could do stuff like that, you know, work and then then go racing and have fun. But now it's it's so expensive. Well, Friday night, uh, I believe it is the ninth. Right. Uh, this Friday night, yeah, uh, the Pure Stock race, 25 laps, modified the Mayhem, 50, and the Wing Sprint's going to run 40 laps. Um, and, you know, we'll see we'll see what happens, but uh, get your tickets and get out there and, and, and watch that event because it's, it's going to be really, really good. Support your local short tracks. Exactly. And we're going to go back uh, a couple, a lot of last week, I think, with the episode with the American Freedom 200 at Jennerstown. Uh, it was a big super late model race up there, and we were all praising Bubba Pollard's return yeah, with boy. the Port City race car, and he's going to go up there and just, you know, whoop some, you know what? Didn't quite happen the way they expected, but I I do know that there's some positive vibes that came out of that. Sammy Smith ended up winning with uh, Garrett Hall, Corey Heim, Matt Craig, Garrett Smithley, and Bubba actually ended up finishing 16th with a fuel pickup issue, right. uh, leading with about 40 or so to go. Uh, disappointing, but like he said, it was exciting because he saw what um, Port City had put him back in. The potential was there for him to come back. And oh, but I'd, very well. We'd wait for him to get to Pensacola in, in that new car and in the new configuration and see what he can do with it because he's the king of Pensacola as far as Blizzard Series races. Yeah. And I'd love nothing more than him come down there and just kick the snot out of him and win a big one because he's, he's a great driver, a good guy to his fans. Um, just an all around, I mean, like I said, he's our driver. We, there's like I said, we always joke there's only one Bubba in racing. Mm -hmm. That's, That's Bubba Pollard. That's and, it. uh, you know, I, I enjoy just talking to him. He even, he even knows me in a way. He'll ask me how my season's going when I see him, you know, how's your season going? Pretty good. You know, so mm -hmm. that's pretty neat. Yeah. Very personable. Yeah. Speaking of that, I tell you something really cool happened to me this week. My, uh, I'm, I'm a huge Daryl Waltrip fan. Dude, dude's been my hero. And Jeff Hammond was his crew chief and two of his three championships and everything like that. Well, I friended the guy on Facebook. I expected him because he is kind of a celebrity because he was on TV and everything. And he, he actually accepted my friend request and I sent him a message, private message. I said, Hey man, just want to let you know that you and Daryl Waltrip are my two biggest NASCAR heroes as far as crew chief and driver are concerned. And he sent me back a thank you, and I thought that was pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, it's always it's always cool when those uh, those guys get back with you, and uh, you know you're included. Yeah, I don't have any friends like that. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yo, okay. Right. Yeah. So the American Freedom 200, Jennerstown, Sammy Smith, you know, takes the win, and a lot of these guys from Jennerstown went to Slinger, uh, the Slinger National 200, uh, 42nd annual. Um, at what they call Slinger Super Speedway. It's a little quarter mile bull ring. Quarter mile bull ring with 33 degree banking, pitting on the outside. And from looking at the aerials, they had a big crowd. Oh, I'm sure. A big field. Okay. Um, they were supposed to take uh, 24 cars. There were 31 on premises. Uh, they took 24, but then there was an altercation, I guess, with the... Um, uh, a couple of drivers that were in the last chance, and I think tech officials got together, officials got together, and they allowed it. So they started 26 cars, and, um, you know, we 
It's a lot of cars on that little track. <laughs> There's a lot of cars, and you know we we've, we've gone through these these names before. You're going to continue to hear them because they're they're young, they're full of talent, and they travel to these big races. Now this was twenty thousand to win. Yes. Yeah. At, at Slinger, yeah, I think it was twenty thousand to win, and an opportunity to run the SRX series when they come back to Slinger uh, July 10th. And a 17-year-old from Wisconsin, Luke Benhouse, ended up taking the win over Derek Krause, Casey Johnson, Dennis Prunty, and Austin Nason. Found it at the top five. Wow. And we talked about this last week uh, with the Pruntys, with Alex, uh, his brother Zach, and his uncle Dennis. Dennis qualified fourth, I think, and ended up finishing, let's see, yeah, he finishing fourth. So John DeAngelis was out there. Um Stephen Nassi and a lot of these guys that we're going to continue to talk about with all this talent and traveling around and, and getting exposure um, and running these big super late model races. It's exciting to to see all these guys, Jesse Love from California and all over the country. A lot of big names. I mean, you know, you you if you're if you're from those certain areas in the country, you know who these people are and you know who, how bad they can be. And they go to somewhere like Wisconsin and what was cool is you talked about a full crowd. Well, you know, NASCAR ran Road America, and they were talking about how crowded it was there. That that they had a full crowd and everybody was having a great time. You know, Wisconsin's a pretty cool place, man. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of a northern redneck place because there's, there's a lot of them up there because it's a great place to live. People are free. They're Americans. They love their racing and they put on a good show. And we got a lot of big name drivers that have come from Wisconsin. Yeah. I mean, you know, Eric Jones was up there. Yeah. Matt Kendis is from that area. Yeah. His his son, Ross, you know, race. Dick Trickle. Dick Trickle, um, Rich Bickle, all those guys come, you know, they run that area. And that's just, um, it, it's just, it's awesome to see these big super late model races across the country and get all these good names in there. 31 drivers, any one of them could have won that race. Yep. Oh, there's, yeah. there's no doubt. That little old track there, there's no telling. You come from the back, it could pile everybody up and you get around them. But, man, I'm going to tell you something. It's impressive to watch those guys roll around that place. It really is. Because I'm going to tell you something. Those guys fly around that quarter mile. <laughs> and it's balls out into the corner, balls out off the corner in every lap. You're just, and you don't get a break. It's not like Bristol. At least Bristol, you get a little bit down the straightaway. That same thing there, you're turning and gassing every couple of seconds. So it's it's impressive to watch those guys. Uh, I've got a, a quote from Finn House here. It says, that's short track racing, and that's racing for ten grand in the Slinger Nationals. But, I mean, ten grand is okay if you consider what the bonus is for winning that race. And that's a, a, a uh, what they call a golden ticket into the fifth round of the SRX uh, racing experience. Yeah. <laughs> a little something you might want. Yeah, I, I mean, he's going to go up against Tony Stewart, Michael Waltrip, Marco Andretti, Tony Canale, Elio Castroneves. Um, I mean, what what a ride that's going to be. And it, it's his home turf. You know, we had Doug Kobe, was at Stafford, ended yep. up taking the win. Right. And then, of course, Tony Stewart on the dirt tracks with well, Knoxville yeah. and, and Eldora. And then you got this uh, Ernie Francis that wins um, at Lucas Oil. Saturday yeah. night. So it's it's diversity. You know, you've got champions, you've got former champions, you've got young kids. You, so Luke Fenhouse getting in that SRX car against these cats Saturday night at his home, <laughs> in his backyard. Yeah. I would I would love no more to see him win it than anything. That well, would be that would be so cool. <laughs> You're not the only one, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, you know, you know what would be awesome though, seriously is be able to go to these races. You know, that's something I've always wanted to do. You know, go to the All-American 400, go to yes. go to Slinger Nationals, go to Killcare Speedway, or go to Stafford, or go to all these places, yeah. man, across the country. And, and because at Stafford, Connecticut, there's a guy, uh, Gary Spinato, and he owns like six street stocks, and you rent them. And you'll see me at the races. I'm wearing my rent a race car T-shirt, and that's because he sent it to me. And I've been wearing it for luck. Because ever since I've been wearing it, I've been doing pretty good, so I'm not changing it. Yeah. <laughs> but he, I contact him every once in a while, and he tells me, if you come up here and rent one of these cars, man, you know how cool that would be to go up and take yeah. take two or three people and each rent a car and run on a track like that and just, just, just to... Just to do it, you know, and and, and to, to be around these guys, you know, because, you know, you'll see some of these guys, or go to Oxford, go to the Oxford 250. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I'd, I'd much rather do that than go to NASCAR races. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so much more fun to watch the short tracks. 
<laughs> the glory boys. Well, I, I mean, you can you can take the NASCAR and Xfinity and uh, you know the Truck Series, which to me I think uh, the Truck Series out of the out of the three is is my favorite. Uh, like the Pro Stock and NHRA is my yeah. favorite. Uh, yeah. Top Fuel and the Funny Car, you can have that too. But I love those Pro Stock. There's so much horsepower, and it's it's a lot closer racing. I think the speed's not as fast, but to me it's just a little bit more of a muscle feel to me when I see the Pro Stocks. Yeah. Well, the Super Late models to me is is where it is right. i mean it's where it's at I, yeah. you can take nascar you can take Xfinity, blah 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 but the, the super late models when these guys go around and travel to nashville they go to texas they go to south florida and 417 southern you know with jesse dutilly there's some of these guys that um michael goddard and michael atwell and all those guys down from south florida come together uh the super late models is where it's at right speaking, yep speaking yep. of super late models and the trucks Let's put something together here that we just found out about not too long ago. Yep. Derek Griffith. Right. He's getting a KBM ride in August. Okay. With a uh, one of the in the truck series. And explain to our listeners what KBM is. Kyle Busch Motorsports. Kyle most, Busch Motorsports. <laughs> right. The most hated man in, in motorsports. Yeah, but you know what? The, th- the thing you can say good about him is he, he sticks with short track racing. Yes, he does. He helps short track teams he and he crap and he pays attention to drivers that, that can be like when, when Eric Jones beat him at the Snowball Derby. He man, put him in a truck. His wife told him, quit crying or put him in a truck. Hired. Put him in a truck and a kid in his rookie year was the champ. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, he's got an eye for talent, and not only that, but my God, a hundred uh, Bush wins or, or Xfinity wins, or whatever it is now, yep. the dude is one of the best of the best. He I is. think everybody's lost count how many wins he's got. Yeah. Probably. Well, he's over two hundred in all three series, but they're like you can't compare him to Richard Petty. No, you can't because yeah. Petty won all his in Cup. Right. But I mean, the, just to think the guy's just got that much talent, and he's just that good. Yeah, and, and he's not as much. Of a back, you know, I, I don't want to use any uh, unfortunate language, but at the Derby last year, when they had the autograph session, I walked right up to him, and got his autograph, no problem. Tried to yeah. talk to him for a little bit, you know, he's a little, he's focused a little bit, so I, I wasn't going to disrupt his concentration, but he's not as bad as some people make him out to be. No, I mean Tony Stewart was cool when we saw him at the dirt track, because Tony would actually stand there and sign all the autographs. I mean, he was getting his stuff together. His girlfriend was. Because his plane was at the Milton Airport, and he knew he had to get back for the cup race, but he finished racing, and he stood there, and there was a line of people, and he did not finish. He didn't walk away till every autograph was signed, and it was funny. I had my pet, one of my pet skunks with me on my shoulder, and it was so funny when he turned around and saw what I was holding. He's like, whoa. He's like, that's different. I said, no, you're not autographing her, but I would like your autograph. He's like, no problem. You know, I'm just the good people, and then... Yeah. I met Ken Schrader at, at yeah. the local store. And, you know, guys like him, you, you, they're gems, man. They're yeah. really gem, great people that just, they're they are a gem to our, our sport. Yeah, huh. Kenny, Kenny Schrader and Kenny Wallace both. I mean, Kenny Wallace just came off of a win. Yeah, uh, modified. Yeah, and the modified, yeah, with that, uh, you know, it, and these guys are running 60 races plus a year. Yeah, Ken Schrader's in his 60s. Yeah, and uh, Ken Trader and Kenny Wallace are just, um, can you imagine just kind of hanging around uh, with those two? Oh, oh God. <laughs> with, a cooler, the, with a cooler full? The, oh, stories, yeah, the yeah. stories that you would hear these guys get at. Uh, oh, just, oh. I mean, it just makes me laugh just not even knowing what they'd say because well, I, can, I can feel it. Well, you remember when they had the show Inside Winston Cup when it was the good show with Alan Bestwick and Schrader and Baltrip and all them would cut up and poor Johnny Benson had to sit there and take it. <laughs> <laughs> and I will never, this is funny because I'll never forget this. This reminds me of a story. They were, they were, the question of the week was when you win a cup race, who gets to keep the trophy? Well, Schrader looks down at Michael and goes, Oh, never mind. You can't answer that. And Michael looks back at him and says, Can you remember back that far, Schrader? <laughs> and poor Johnny Benson sitting in the middle of him, like, Oh, please, God, don't ask me anything. I don't want to talk. <laughs> it was so funny to look on Johnny Benson's face. He was just like, just like yeah. looking at both of them, like, I don't want to say anything. Yeah, Johnny Benson. <clears throat> yeah. Man, I haven't heard I haven't heard anything about him in a you, long time. You know he's the pace car driver for SRX? Is he really? Yeah, he's her, he's the pace car driver I for SRX. Did not know that. Yep. yep. I learned that today. I didn't know. I was listening to one of the podcasts. I listened to uh, the Scene Vault podcast, and and uh, I was like, holy crap. I did not know that. That's pretty cool. Because I'm going to tell you something. Johnny Benson was another guy that, that you know, 
His from cr- Wisconsin. Yeah, he's from Wisconsin. Yep. And and I, yeah, and he when he ended up uh, winning that truck championship at the last Bill Davis number also because Bill Davis was fixing to close his shop and they're the champions, but. You know, I mean, Johnny Benson was a great guy. I always enjoyed listening to him too. But man, Michael and uh, Michael and uh, Kenny were just funny. I mean, they were hilarious on that show. Yeah, these these guys, um, yeah, Ken Schrader. Uh, it, you can go. The list is like, oh yeah, uh, it's a long one. You yeah. know, and some of the stories that don't even really have to be a driver. You could be, you know, the crew chiefs or you know someone that's affiliated with the teams that. To have stories that uh, you could just sit there and listen to them for hours. Right. Remember when uh, Stephen Wallace wrecked that uh, Porta John at the Snowball Derby one year? <laughs> yeah. And they called him the Bleep House Bandit is what, what he got the nickname. And um, my friend Bo Resmondo won the Derby that year in Sportsman. Hmm. And he went to Bristol and he met Kenny uh, Wallace. And Kenny goes, oh, you know my, my nephew, the Bleep House Bandit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think Rusty Rusty ended up writing a hefty check to pay well, for all actually, that damage, didn't he? Actually, Eddie Mercer wrote the check to kept Stephen from going to jail because the boyettes <laughs> wanted him arrested because he was drunk and he was acting belligerent. On the four-wheeler, knocking he, everything over. Well, he was on a golf cart and just plowed into a couple of them and d- damaged them. Eddie wrote the check, and then, of course, I'm sure Rusty paid him back, but Eddie kept him from going to jail. <laughs> We'd hope so. <laughs> well, he, I mean, you know, he had he had a promising career, you know, with uh, Richie Waters and that Victor Ford number yeah. five super late model there for a little bit, but uh, you know, what what happened? I don't know. And I, you know, I heard he had Tourette's too, and because you were watching when he did a like a an interview on national television, you'd see him start twitching, and immediately the interview was over. They'd get away before he started hollering out all kinds of crap. But that would have been more entertaining, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate to bring up something that's funny, but that's funny. <laughs> you just see him go, sorry, start hollering stuff out, like get him away from the camera. Yeah, we don't we don't mean to pick on anybody that no, like no, no, on this no. podcast or this episode, but no, no. you but know, it just, it's just it's just a fact. It's not. I'm not being mean. It's the old bump and run. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we touch on it and go by <laughs> and move on. All right, so uh, Friday night, uh, the prep for the pro stock, uh, pure stock race, uh, modified to mayhem, 50 laps, wing sprint cars to be determined. Right. Uh, that's uh, this Friday night at Five Flags Speedway in Pensacola, Florida. Um, we've got another big super late model, and I, I, I love talking about super late model guys because the big races coming up in Anderson, Indiana, with the Red Bud 400 on Monday night, July the 12th. Um, Carson Hosevar. Uh, if anybody has been keeping up with the racing, they know that he's he's been in the in the top series. I think he's running the trucks. He's running a truck right now. Yeah, and yeah. He's, he's had a couple of uh, Xfinity starts. Yeah, right. And um, he was uh, leading last year. He had two hundred and twenty six laps led, um, and then he's going to be back out there uh, with Cody Coughlin, uh, Dalton Armstrong, Casey Johnson again, Steve Doerr. Uh, Austin Nason, Jesse Love again, Sammy Smith, Cody Swanson, a list of big time super late model drivers are going to get together in Indiana and go 400 laps, oh, wow. which is, I think if it's a half mile, it would be 200 miles. Yeah. So, but it's the Red Bud 400. Um, you could probably catch it pay per view somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where, um, but okay. you know, if you do your research, you know, you can look up the, the results or, Come back and listen to us next week. I'm sure we'll catch up on it. But that's another, the Red Bud 400 uh, at Anderson uh, Speedway in Indiana. It's going to be a big one. Another one you'd love to put on your uh, bucket list to go oh. to. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. Definitely. Exactly. Definitely. That's, that's you know, one of the big big races I'd love to go to. I think it would be just super cool to get in an RV and start somewhere like in South Florida, go to Speed Weeks, yeah. leave there, find the next big late model race, find the next one, yeah. maybe come home for a couple of weeks and then just keep going. Because, I mean, some of those races are so awesome. And like I said, the atmosphere is so much better than a NASCAR race. Sorry, mm-hmm. I'm not mm-hmm. sorry. But, you know, NASCAR has <laughs> yeah. gotten to where it's trying to be too prim and proper instead of its roots. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you, I mean, just take the Snowball Derby, for instance. Um these guys start coming in and, and doing some practicing, and then when Monday hits, the week prior to the Sunday, yeah, it is on. it is full on. Yeah, absolutely, the on. traffic is crazy. The parking is crazy. 
um, getting in and out. But I'm telling you, if you get a group of people, get an RV, rent it, get your parking space uh, with a camping site, maybe down on the fairgrounds on Mobile Highway and Pine Forest Road, um, and bring your utensils, bring yeah. everything you need, and just have a blast for four days. I'm telling you, we'll yeah. not be disappointed not at all no one I, snowball derby is the best of the best man it's fun you hang out with your yep. friends ride around on a golf cart drink some uh, adult, adult, <laughs> adult beverages you know because there's some moonshine gets passed around out there i'm, I'm no. partaking a few a little bit here and a <laughs> little bit of crown and coke you know yeah. just just have a good time because we race on my class runs on thursday night so when my race is over i'm ready to hang out and have a good time yeah, you can <laughs> For just four just, days. Oh heck yeah! <laughs> yeah, I mean the four day pass is like what a hundred bucks, one hundred twenty. Uh, I think yeah, that's last year. One hundred twenty yeah, for but, four days. But it's worth every damn penny. Oh yeah. Oh, yes. Every stinking little penny you spend yeah. on that is awesome. I mean, and not just the racing, but I mean you need to be down in the pits, yep. watching the reactions of the guy on the bubble on qualifying night. Mm. That is incredible. I've gotten some shots down there. You just see the the tension, like. uh Am I going to make it? Am I going to make it? Yeah, okay. Exactly. Another car goes by. Okay, we're in. Okay, when? Uh, uh, yeah. Dang it. And and then then you get close to the end, and then some of the cars don't even stop in the pits. They just go straight through because they know they haven't qualified. They're in the last chance, which is, oh, man, that is god-awful to be in that race. But you either make it or you don't. Yeah. And yeah, uh, we, we've seen some of those wrecks. It was more than a race, it was wrecks. Talk about rooting and gouging. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. Well, I mean, you're in that last transfer spot, and the guy behind you is close enough. Yeah. You know, you <laughs> ought to be expected to get rooting and gouged on. <laughs> yeah. The bump and run is definitely on there. Especially because... some of those guys that towed from like California, and I'm like, yeah. hmm, hey, this guy here's near closer. I'm going to have to move him out of the way to get <laughs> in this show. It won't take him long to get home. <laughs> yeah. No, me, I got a long ways to go. But that, that um, like I said, it's it's one of the best races you'll ever go to. I mean, even door bumper clear, one of the spotters, a couple of them come down every year. TJ Majors and uh, they got spots for Daryl Wallace. He comes down and they spot for people. And yeah. it's it's cool to see those guys down here. And you'll see a lot of big name uh, guys sneak in. Like when, when Joe Gibbs' grandson raced, Joe Gibbs was here. Yeah. Um, Jeff a, Burton. Jeff Burton. I've Bill Elliott. Yeah. I mean, those guys come in and they, you, you're like, Wait a minute, that's so and so. Yeah, yeah Dave, cool. Dave Blaney and yeah. Rusty Wallace and yeah. Matt Kenseth, all watching yeah, their kids, man. you know, and yeah, yeah. it just. Uh, you don't know who you're going to see. Because the seasons for just about everybody, yeah. if not everybody, is over. Oh, yeah. yeah. So all everybody works. builds that. You can see them going through these major series. I mean, they got this one cart. Oh, that's for the Derby. Don't touch that. Yeah, leave that one alone. Yeah, leave that one alone. <laughs> Yep. Because they know that it's a jump-off point to a bigger career. Mm -hmm. It's a distinct possibility you win that race, mm -hmm. you're going to move up. Yeah. It's it's more. It's worth more than just $20,000. Exactly. And a lot of these guys <laughs> that are running, you know, top five and running for championships, they're, they're not really looking at that money. No. Well, they're looking for a door. The prestige. The open. Exactly. Yeah. And that beautiful the Eric trophy. Jones. Big trophy. Yeah. yeah. Eric Jones and Christian Eckes and John Henry Emichek, all these yep. guys that have come to run the Derby that – Purely, we're just kind of getting their feet wet. Right. But when they did, when it did happen, it yeah. just the door went wide open. Yep. And look at them now. So that's that's really why they come down here and they run all these big races to get recognized. And um, you know, I'm I'm still pulling for Bubba. I'm going to sit with Bubba Pollard, and yep. Pollard's Me got too. one one little monkey to get off his shoulder, and it's a snowball derby. Everything else is probably he's already written up. Even you know? late in the season, at some of the uh, last. Blizzard races, they'll come in for practice, a kind of tune-up session to get ready for the Derby. Yeah. I've seen him show up with, one time. It was right before one race. He went out. It was on Thursday night. Normally, none of the super guys show up on Thursday. He unloaded, made about 10 laps, what? got out of that car with the biggest grin on his face, and he went right back in the trailer, and he left. I was like, oh, yeah, he's happy. Come back the next week. Next week was the Blizzard race, and he kicked their behinds. Mm -hmm. So the yep. dude knows what he's doing. And I would love to see him win a derby just, just to get, like you said, like Dave, he's like the Dale Earnhardt, you know, get, get yep. somebody tries that dadgum race and everything <laughs> happens to you, you know? Yeah. Yep. You just well, never know. Hopefully this is his year. Um, you know, only time will tell. And let me get that Port City race car dialed in and he knows what he has to do. And right. he's got, uh, he, he was talking about everything coming full circle. You know, he started out with Port City and he's, right. he's gone through, 
uh, some some wins and some big wins, uh, some traveling. He's coming back to Port City, and he I mean he seemed really excited about what happened. It just uh, it's just an incident that that took him out, but he had some positive vibes coming out of that. So hopefully this is uh, going to be his year with Port City, and I look forward to seeing that. I yeah, I do too. <laughs> I really do. Well, I I just like to see a good side by side battle. I mean, it, it it I would love to see him win it, but. You know, there's there's a lot of big drivers out there that deserve a win at Five Flag Speedway if they can hold on to the end. But that's what he's so good at is mate, saving that car till the last twenty laps, and then he just right. eats you up like Jaws and just tears you, tears your back bumper off. Next thing you know, I've seen him try to pass somebody and the guy cut him off and Bubba just back up and go, "Okay, I see your car's going away. It just won't be long." And sure enough, man, that car <laughs> slipped. And he'll drive right by him. Yeah, but a lot of people still don't know that that track is better. But it will still chew your tires up if you're oh, too aggressive. Trust me. I know I blistered outside of my right front in the last race. Yep. Ooh, it started showing blisters, and I'm like, we got to run 10 extra laps this next race. We're, we're trying some different things. we got some ideas we're going to try right. and see. Because I mean, we're, we're in our tire shortage. I mean, there's just right. no way around it. We can't help that. Right. You know, we had to turn in three tires, which normally we turn in two and get to buy two more. Now we had to turn in three, and we only get to buy one. And mm-hmm. I've heard some comments before we uh, started. Uh, some of the other tracks about the tire situation, how their thing, uh, Rich Bickle was saying something about uh, mm-hmm. it was a difficulty for them up there. Swinger. Yeah. And he was fine, you know, if uh, if it's not good on lap one, but it's good on lap 100, so you're just going to stay on the four tires and just run it. Right. And that, yeah. that comes from experience. And we went back, uh, we could go back first, second, third episode. We talked about that youth and experience right. and everything. And that's yep. Rich Bickle's experience speaking. Right. <laughs> you know, some of these young guys would want those tires, but. Bickle knows what he's doing. Right. He, he's won four times at Slinger. He's won five times at Snowball oh, Derby. Derby. So <laughs> he's I, a little I mean, familiar with that. Place. I think the guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah. yeah just, he's got some experience. I mean, yeah. You, yeah. you can give him some props. Yeah. <laughs> and this being his last year, oh boy. And, and you know, you want everybody to win, but you got to, somebody's got to take the trophy. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, it's funny. You know, I, it's I'm the senior guy in my division. I'm the oldest guy racing in that class, and I'm actually the oldest continuous driver right now at Five Flags. Has been doing it for years more than anybody else to con- continuously every year racing, and you don't see that anymore really either. Yeah. A lot of guys yeah. get into sport and quit. Right. You know, and it really sucks. I wish I wish some of these young people and some of these people that just sit in the grandstands would would build a car and come race. And enjoy it. Why, why? Everybody's always, I got to win. I got to win. You know, I mean, I raced for years without winning a feature, but I had fun. Right. You know what I mean? I, I raced for years and I would buy used tires and I would get used wheels and I would buy used parts, but I was on the racetrack having a blast. And that's what it needs to be brought back to. Right. It shouldn't be about the trophies. It should be about the experiences. Yeah. <laughs> and the friends you make. I wouldn't know either one of y'all if I didn't race out there. And right. y'all are my good friends. That's like, true. That's you know, true. And, and I've made a ton of friends through racing. Absolutely. Yeah. Made a few enemies too, but you know, hey. <laughs> hey, that happens. And they're not, not they're, they're like frenemies. That. Frenemy. No, there's frenemies. some that are just straight up hate my guts, and that's fine. I mean, I, did, I, I bring my friends to the racetrack. I didn't come there to make them, but I made a few while I was there, you know. Right. Yeah, so. The contacts you make and the people that you know and things you experience, you know, it's, it's what it's all worth. Yeah, you know, and, and reflecting on losing a guy like Buddy Miller, you know, he he was a, a great guy to run a racetrack, built many an engine. His his motors won several snowball derbies. They've won lots of dirt track races, and just an all around great guy. And someone that I met through someone told me to you bring your heads to Buddy and have him do them. So I took a set of heads to him, and I had one of his crate motors for a full year. And you know, he never did you wrong. If something was wrong, he would fix it. Mm-hmm. You know, just good people. That's true. Well, Jim, um, you know, you got the sportsman, you know, back in the shop and uh, you're going to help uh, Brock uh, yep. Friday night and uh, that open wheel. Uh, no, that's, that's, it's, uh, no, we're helping um, Tyrone. Tyrone, <laughs> Benjamin Tyrone Crawford. Oh, Crawford. Benjamin Crawford. Okay. Benjamin I'm sorry. Tyrone. Yeah. Brock, Brock is in the sportsman. <laughs> uh, my bad. Okay. Yeah. Uh, We're working on his car, too. We're getting it painted right now. Oh, God, I hate painting race cars. <laughs> it happens so Oh, long. especially when a kid designed it and he wants it a certain way. So, I mean, it's his car, and, and I get it. We're going to do it the way he wants it. His dad wants it lettered and 
all nice and pretty. And mm -hmm. I got to give them a shout out. They said I could borrow the car if something happened to mine and finish right. the season. So there let's hope it doesn't come to that because, man, the old girl I got is fast and I want her to win a race. And I, this one we got coming up pays a thousand dollars, and I sure like take that money home with that bigger trophy and mm -hmm. enjoy it because we we the last race we were so far gone, and uh, Billy, you know, it happens. <laughs> and and I give a shout out to a guy that's going to be racing with us next time. He bought the car from Billy Hoover, um, Kevin Mitchell. Uh, he's a, a dirt late model racer. Uh, been racing dirt for years. This is going to be his first time on asphalt. Shout out to him. He's going to uh, come race with us and play, and he's, he bought a pretty decent ride, so yep. he won't take him long. He'll be a contender, I guarantee you, because the dude is clean. He's a great driver, and he's fast. So welcome to Asphalt, Kevin. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, yeah that's uh, that's coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. I guess yep. the 24th is a Saturday night yeah. that Sportsman yeah. Race will take part of the doubleheader of the Blizzard Series on the 23rd and 24th, which, which is, is just a couple of weeks away. That's um, going to be a huge payday for somebody. <laughs> they, can, they can take it all. Yeah, well, the, well, the Slinger Nationals, the American Freedom 200, the Red Bud 400 coming up on Monday. Uh, we've covered just about everything that uh, we can cover right. uh, this week, and uh, we're going to bring it to a close, and uh, we look forward to the next episode next week with Short Track Guys Podcast, brought to you by Short Track Exclusives. And um, Jim, the driver of the 07 com sportsman, Ted Baber, Ted Baber Video Productions. Look them both up. I know it's uh, lowercase JPB. JBP. JBP07 at hotmail.com. At hotmail.com. Hotmail .com and Ted underscore Baber at yahoo.com. I'm yep. a Yahoo again. You got any that questions, is. any comments, uh, any advice what or whatever? Like? You know, they did, we're all more than welcome. And uh, give a shout out to Facebook, uh, our page, uh, Short Track Guys Podcast on Facebook. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Um, Give us a good review on iTunes or or Spotify or wherever you listen. It helps us move toward and make sure you leave a review, whether it's two words. It helps us grow. And uh, if anybody out there is interested in sponsoring a podcast, we'd love to have you on here. And uh, we're going to, like I said, we we got some guests coming up and we're going to do some neat things. We we really enjoy doing this and we hope you all like it. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate all the listeners and uh, any feedback um, one way or the other. We do appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to getting together with you guys next week and uh, move forward with this. In the meantime, get to the track, support your local racetrack. That's right. Please. Go support your local racetrack. Get your butt out there, drink a beer with your buddies, have a hot dog. And watch cars go fast and turn That's left. Right. That's it. Bottom line is, thank you all for listening. Good night, everybody.